Hello everyone, this is a final video I'm making for the course this semester. And uh, this video is just stepping through a couple of problems on the problem set for Module 7. And in the past, uh, students have uh, had the most difficulty, I think, understanding the lac operon and the, the phenotypes that are associated with the different genotypes. So I want to go through two of the problem sets on problem set uh, for Module 7. And this is for the problem set regarding the prokaryotic gene regulation. So uh, the first one is, uh, oops, is number six on that problem set. And this is basically going through the, uh, for different genotypes, what are the associated phenotypes? And that is expression of beta-galactosidase, which is encoded by the LAC-Z gene, or lactose permease encoded by the LAC-Y gene under different conditions in the media, plus lactose or minus lactose for both, All right? So uh, I have a short video to go through that, which uh, we can take a look at now. All right, so I wanna go through this problem uh, related to the LAC operon. And uh, this was on the problem set for module seven and uh, under prokaryotic um, problem set. Um, so what I've uh, done on the board is reproduce the grid that's in the problem. And then on the left side here, various information about either the lac repressor or the lac operator related to the different genotypes here. All right, so uh, this has genotypes on the left. And then we're looking for, is there expression of beta-galactosidase? And remember, beta-galactosidase is from the LAC-Z gene. And is there expression of lactose permease? And remember, that's from the LAC-Y gene. And for each of them, we're looking for expression in media with lactose or without, with or without, okay? So we're starting with the just the wild type genotype, wild type alleles for repressor, operator, LAC-Z and LAC-Y. Um, do you see LAC-Z expression in media with lactose? Yes, lactose is going to induce expression, right? Do you see expression of LAC-Z in media without lactose? No, it's inducible. Um, so um, <clears throat> like all catabolite regulated genes, inducible expression. So that's a minus. And it's gonna be the same for a lac permease, right? Because it's part of the same operon. So present with lactose, absent without lactose. Okay. Um, how about in this case, repressor positive, operator positive, lac Z negative, lac Y positive. So lac Z negative indicates a null allele of the lac Z gene. So in that case, you can't get expression of beta-galactosidase with or without lactose because the gene itself is mutated. For LAC-Y though, it's still gonna be inducible because it's hooked up to this wild type operator. So present with lactose, absent without. And this genotype here is similar to this one except it's LAC-Y that's mutant. And so you won't have expression of lactose permease, it's a null allele, but you will have inducible expression of lactose beta-galactosidase. All right, uh, in this example now, uh, the mutation is in the lac repressor gene. And the repressor is a null allele, or um, it's at least not functional. Um, so what happens is, in the lac minus, if it's not a null, it still produces a protein. Um, the mutation is in the site that binds to the operator. For the wild type repressor, the site that binds to the operator is going to fit into the wild type operator, right? It's gonna bind onto it. In the lac uh, minus, this repressor is not capable of binding to the wild type operator. Um, so either the repressor is absent or not able to bind to the operator. If it can't bind to the operator, then this, um, this operon can't be shut off. 
it's going to result in constitutive expression. And that's going to be true in the presence or the absence of uh, lactose because repressor can never bind. Okay. Um, how about this super repressor allele? Um, in the super repressor allele, the uh, repressor is mutated not in the operator binding site, but in the inducer binding site. So when lactose is present, it can't bind to the repressor and it can't pull it off. Um, so this repressor is always going to be bound to the operator. And that's true in the presence or absence of lactose. Even when lactose is present, can't bind, can't change its shape, like, a, like in wild type, right? Wild type repressor. In the presence of lactose, lactose binds, repressor changes shape, and this repressor can't bind to the operator. Super repressor never changes shape. So these are always going to be shut off. The super repressor never can be pulled off the operator. Finally, this genotype is an operator constitutive mutation. In an operator constitutive mutation, the repressor binding site, the sequence of the operator is, is uh, mutated. And in this mutated version, it's not capable of binding to the repressor. So this can also never be shut, um, shut this can't be shut off because the repressor can't bind. Constitutive exp expression of both LAC-Z and LAC-Y um, in the operator constitutive mutation, okay? So that's how that, that answer came about. Okay, so that's number six, and uh, let's take a look at the other problem, which is number eight, which uh, describes phenotypes for E. coli cells that are partial diploids. They have two copies of the LAC operon. All right, this is um, question number eight on the um, problem set for module seven having to do with prokaryotic gene expression. And in this question, the table is presented like this with a number of genotypes. In this question, these are marrow diploids, partial diploids. So there are two copies of the LAC operon. And the genotype here shows one copy, plasmid copy on the top, and chromosomal copy on the bottom, okay? And then it asks the question for both LAC-Z and LAC-Y, is expression inducible, not expressed, or constitutive? So these two may show the same or they may differ, depending on the genotype. All right, so what's the answer? Um, so first of all, for the uh, first genotype here, both copies are fully wild type, okay? So um, there's a wild type repressor, and this repressor is able to bind to the wild type operator, but if lactose is present, it's gonna change the shape of the repressor, and that, will, that repressor can't bind to the wild type operator. So for this genotype, it's gonna be essentially wild type genotype times two. So uh, for both LAC-Z and LAC-Y, Expression of beta galactosidase and lactose permease is going to be inducible. Inducible expression for both. Okay. And number two is showing uh, basically the same thing, except the only mutations are in the coding genes for LAC-Z and LAC-Y. One copy, the plasmid copy, has a null allele of LAC-Y, uh, but the chromosome copy has a wild type allele of it. For LAC-Z, the plasmid copy is wild type and the chromosome copy is null. All right, so the mutations are present for both coding um, genes. However, there are wild type versions also present. Yeah. The regulatory sequences, so there's a wild type repressor on the plasmid, null repressor on the other. Both of these contain wild type operators, okay? So, <clears> the <throat> situation for these is, will we see inducible, not expressed, or constitutive expression? All right, because both of them have wild type operators, these operators are able to bind to wild type repressors. 
So there is a copy of a null repressor. However, there is also a copy of a wild type repressor. Wild type repressor is diffusible. So this is going to be produced in the bacterial cell. It's going to diffuse around, and it can bump into either of these copies. Both of these copies have wild type operator. Okay. So in the absence of lactose, this repressor is going to be binding to both operators, and the operon will be off. In the presence of lactose, lactose is going to be able to bind to repressors present at both of these operators, and it's going to pull the um, repressors off. So this is going to be the same as the first one. This will be inducible expression for both. Okay, doesn't matter which copy, uh, which operator uh, the wild type lac Z or uh, lac Y or lac Z is linked to. Both of these are operating um, fully functional operators, and there's a fully functional inducer. All right, let's look at this example. In this example, um, lac Z plus is on the plasmid copy, lac Y plus is on the chromosomal copy. For the regulatory sequences, both functional operators, but we have a super repressor. Okay, super repressor is not able to bind to lactose, allolactose, the inducer. Okay, so this super repressor will constantly be bound to the operator, and um, there's no way to pull it off because there's no binding site for lactose or the inducer. Okay. So that means um, there are both functional copies of the operator. That means the super repressor is constantly going to be bound to this, and it can't be induced to come off. So for the both of these, there's no expression. All right. So far, both of these genes are being, um, you know, kind of regulated the same. All right, let's look at this one. Um, and so the plasmid here has an operator constitutive mutation. Constitutive mutation is not able to bind to the repressor. Uh, but the chromosomal copy has a wild type operator. The wild type operator is linked to the lac Y gene, and the constitutive operator is linked to the wild type lac Z gene. Um, so, and the repressor is both wild type. Okay, that means it's able to bind to the operator and to the inducer. So, uh, for the situation for beta galactosidase, the lac Z gene, because this is linked to the operator constitutive mutant, uh, this operator can never bound, bind the repressor, and so this operon can't be shut off. The lac Z gene, therefore, will be constitutively expressed. The lac Y gene on this operon is mutated. Okay, so let's hold off on that one for a minute. So for lac Z constitutive expression. For lac Y, the lac Y positive wild type allele is linked to the wild type operator. This operator can bind to the wild type repressor. In the absence of lactose, in the presence of lactose, the repressor will be pulled off. For lac Y, then, this will be inducible expression. Okay? So that, that example, they differ. Final example is, uh, what if the plasmid copy here with wild type lac Z is linked to a constitutive operator, um, but it's also in the presence of a super repressor. Um, and so the chromosomal copy has the super repressor and the wild type lac Y gene. All right, so now we're mixing it together. Two mutations. Um, here's the OC that can't bind to the repressor. The super repressor would normally be bound to the wild type operator and not able to be pulled off because the binding site for the inducer is mutated, can't bind to the inducer. Um, so let's look at the top copy here. Um, the operator constitutive mutant, the binding site for the repressor is mutated. So it doesn't matter if the repressor is a super repressor or not. 
This cannot bind to this operator because the binding site for the repressor is mutated. So this operon is always going to be on, always be expressed. And this constitutive operon is linked to the LAC Z wild type allele. The LAC Y is null on this copy. So for now, LAC Z is going to be constitutively expressed. The LAC Y is linked to a wild type operator. And however, there's also a super repressor present. The super repressor is going to diffuse through the cell. It's a transacting factor. And the LAC wild type operator is going to determine the expression of LAC Y because it's physically linked to it on the same copy. And this is a cis acting factor in the oper operator. Because of the presence of the super repressor, it's gonna be constantly bound, can't be pulled off, and the LAC Y, therefore, is not expressed. Okay, so that's kind of the thought process you should go through when you evaluate these kind of uh, marrow diploids um, and their, the different genotypes.